Hello everybody. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at the new depth of field highlight solver that got introduced in Corona 10. This thing improves the rendering of blurry highlights, an example of which you see in front of you right now. The image you're currently looking at was rendered without the new depth of field solver being turned on. And if we were to render the same image for the same amount of time with the new depth of field solver being turned on, well, then it would look like this. So as you can clearly see, the new depth of field highlight solver can considerably improve the rendering of blurry highlights. Now, the difference can be even more apparent than that if you compare your renders before they get to a noise free state. So here's the same image, but just, you know, we stopped the rendering process midway and the blurry highlights really aren't looking good yet. This is without the new depth of field solver being turned on. If we turn it on, however, well, then those blurry highlights look much, much better. Now, the new depth of field highlight solver is, as is common with Corona, designed to be really easy to use. All you need to do is you need to go into your render settings, go under the performance menu, and in there you just simply toggle the depth of field highlight solver to on. That's all that there is to it. After you've done that, just restart your rendering process and you've got the new depth of field highlight solver doing its thing. Now, there are two parameters that you can tweak if you so want to, but we really don't recommend touching them at all because the defaults should work really well in the vast majority of the situations. In case you do want to tweak things, though, for whatever reason, really, uh, well, then the budget parameter defines how much power you want to divert to rendering out those blurry highlights. Obviously, though, this comes at the expense of rendering out all the other effects. Uh, but I suppose if you've got literally nothing but blurry highlights rendering out, uh, well, then you could consider upping this parameter. Then uh, you've got the reprojection count parameter. This thing is mainly there for debugging purposes and the number itself changes how many times the highlight itself is projected back onto the image. So all in all, really, we recommend you leave these at their defaults. Now, one thing still worth mentioning here is that all of your depth of field settings and all your camera settings uh, do still work with this new depth of field highlight solver. So uh, just as an example, right, this image was rendered with a custom aperture shape, which just like all the other camera settings clearly still functions with the new depth of field highlight solver. All right. So now we know how this new feature works and how you can turn it on. Question is, however, why isn't it on by default? Well, the new depth of field highlight solver will improve the rendering of blurry highlights. But if you don't have any in your scene, then it really makes no sense turning it on. Doing that, turning it on, that is, in a scene without blurry highlights might actually slow down the rendering process of the rest of the image. So ideally, you turn the new depth of field highlight solver to on whenever your rendered image has a lot of those blurry highlights in it. Now, this solver is also labeled as experimental, and that is because there might be a couple of corner cases here and there uh, where the solver doesn't quite work as intended. Uh, that is why the label is there, and we do plan on improving uh, this feature in the future. Okay, all right, so that's it for this one. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next one.